Greg, one more. You ready? Yes, sir. I sure am. What, what would you like to talk about? Well, I got a question for you that you can answer for me and others who might listen, which is you've been operating at a high level for a long time on this journey of consciousness and awareness. So my question is, what keeps you on the path? Oh, well, I, I, I thank you for the, the kind thought, but I don't think I'm anywhere close to being at a high level. Um, and that's part of what keeps me on the path because <laughs> I'm such a blockhead. I never get the lesson. It's got to go over and over and over and every day. And as soon as I get in the car and go to the store, there'll be some traffic thing that I'll complain about or <laughs> right. some, some guy doing something that'll offend me. And I'll have to say something to myself under my breath. That is where I'm stuck. My point is that I think um, we have to be a little careful about thinking that you get to a, get to a point where, where you can put it on autopilot. I don't think that's the case. It's like um, nutrition and it's like uh, RT resistance training, any kind of fitness, you have to keep at it. And it's the consistency that produces the result that you want. I struggle with, and I'm very, very aware of my closed hearted egocentric behavior. But I'm very good now at monitoring it, very good about understanding when I'm doing something I don't want to, to do. I want to be a certain way in life. I want to have inner peace. I want to be open-hearted. I want to be compassionate in my work, in my personal life. I want to have unlimited love. I want to be able to receive it. I want to be able to give it. Those are my core things that I want to always keep in the forefront. So in order to cultivate open-heartedness with others, I have to do the inner work that creates the grounds for more understanding for more love. And how do I do that? Well, the first thing is I stop my emotional reactivity to things that offend me. Mm. If you have emotional reactivity to things that are hot buttons for you, the more hot buttons you have, the less inner peace you're going to have because the world is full of nothing but hot buttons, right? The idea is to get to the point, and I think we've discussed this many times in the podcast before, get to the point where you can truly believe whatever happens, I don't much mind. Whatever happens, I can deal with. Now, I'm not there yet. I don't think many people are, but that's a wonderful goal. The idea is that whatever is in the world is in the world, no matter how vile and dark and terrible, it's in the world. And you have a choice. Your choice is to try to change that behavior by being upset and offended. Well, that doesn't help. Go about changing the behavior or changing what you want to see to be the change in the world. Be that change, but don't be offended by it. Just be the change and shut up about being offended. Anyway, that's my two cents for this morning. No, I know. I, I love that, Rick. Uh, yeah, I, I, I agree with you totally. Is that I'm not there. I mean, I may never get there. There's some who, who, you know, probably have, but I haven't. And that's like you, what keeps me on the path is because I want to continue to cultivate inner peace. I want to fill it all the time. I want to be able to, you know, just have unconditional love just flowing out of me. Uh, I want to recognize it, uh, the humanity and other people. Uh, I just want to serve, you know, well, you know, others in the moment that's in front of me to the best of my ability. And what keeps me on the path? I don't want to suffer, man. Like I want to keep suffering down to a minimum. And uh, and the more and more I stay on the path, the less suffering I experience. And that's priceless. Seriously, that inner peace, that bliss, that state of equanimity that you taught me, uh, man, it's just a beautiful place. It is so beautiful. So many good things happen in that space. You see the colors. You see, uh, you see life, it's just beautiful. And I've experienced suffering. 
I'm good. <laughs> I am good. <laughs> I I experienced, you know, I'm I'm sure I've experienced less than 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 a lot of people, but what I experienced, it was enough. I don't need to you know keep touching that hot stove. Uh uh-uh. uh. One one time is enough. I got, I got my hand got burned when I was a kid. That was enough. <laughs> I don't I don't need to keep touching the stove. I don't need to keep going down those roads that uh that are just lead to suffering, man, for me, for others. So that's what keeps me on the path. I love this feeling. I love like living life at a very, you know, free wow. and as you mentioned, open hearted uh, level. I, I love that. I never want to, to, to experience anything else. And I know that what will take me off the path, what will lead to me not experiencing that is my personal mind. Because as you mentioned, being bothered by all these other things. I mean, when I'm not bothered, it's amazing. Michael Singer talks about like, why are you bothered? You know, there's so many things in the world that don't bother you. <laughs> like you're not bothered by what's happening on Mars right now. You, <laughs> you, 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 you're That's not bothered good. by it, <laughs> right? Right. You're not. That's- you're not bothered that it's, it's, it's raining, you know, across the world. You could care less, you know, that the caterpillar is about to, you know, become a butterfly. You don't care. Like, there's so many things that don't bother you. But this thing comes into your awareness. It hits your stuff. And now you're bothered. You're doing that, you know. And to be aware that I'm doing I get on get on the pickleball court and I'm matched up with somebody. I'm the one who's making this a problem. <laughs> like I'm the one that's that's doing this. And the, the minute that I can stay mindful that I am doing this to me, that I'm affecting my experience, I'm like, get back on the path. <laughs> you, you got off the path, come back over here. And the minute that I get back over there, I'm like, ah, oh, this feels so nice. I, stay here. And so I hope those who are listening, that whether it's your spouse, you know, your children, your job, your coworker, whatever that thing is, that thing out there in the world that has got you all like worked up, let go of you and then you'll be okay. And then if you need to deal with something, you're the person we want dealing with it. I don't want somebody bothered dealing with it. They're just gonna make a mess of it. You know, Michael Singer gives his example about uh, people, you know, who, who are, uh, environmentalist, but then they see a Hummer and they want to blow up the Hummer. Yo, <laughs> you're adding more pollution <laughs> like by blowing up the Hummer. Like, like just let all that go. Like, I'm trying to make sure that I'm not polluted inside. That's 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 I'm being I'm being I'm being a good steward of this environment right here, and um, and the path is what allows me to do that consistently. I'll never get there, like you said, Rick, but. Man, there's so much peace that comes with being on the path. And, you know, like you said, Kaizen, getting a little bit better every day, working toward that. Uh, it's just beautiful. So, you know, wanting to serve, wanting to experience inner peace consistently, wanting to live with an open heart. That's what keeps me on the path, too. Anything you want to add before we close, Rick? Just one last quick idea. I, I love that line. It's to make it make a great tattoo, you know, if I didn't have such old skin and uh, no place for it. But if I had another tattoo, that might be the great one that you just mentioned, which is I am the cause of all of this, right? I'm mm-hmm. the one that's causing my own suffering. And I think what what what's important is to realize that when I say hot buttons or things that offend us, those things come from the expectations that each of us has about the way we want things to be and how they're falling short. So the solution is to do everything you can to make it better, to work for what you believe in. If it's the environment, it's the environment. If it's for peace, it's for peace. Whatever your thing is, or a a domestic uh, household that's free of conflict, whatever that is, work your best to achieve that. I'm not saying don't do that and ignore everything that you believe in. What I'm saying is that when you expect it, the expectancy of it to be a certain way for you is where you get into trouble and that causes the suffering. So you can have the stimulus, bad environment, and then you can work to improve the environment with whatever your actions are. But the idea of just sitting back and saying, this is awful what's happening, this is terrible and I'm offended, that's the suffering 
<laughs> that expectation that it should be different. That's the inner suffering that causes you to have that problem. And the more blocks you have, the, the less space there is in your heart. There is the less space there is in your soul for the openness that you need to have a complete and restful inner peace. <laughs> you know, the open heartedness is where it's at, you know, that not the suffering. That's all. That's all I like to say. Absolutely. I love it, Rick. I love you. Thank you so much. You, for today. <laughs> have a good day today, man. We'll see you later. I'll see you later. Thank you.